leading on from my last video where I talked about the extension of the narrative side of the game, this will be a quick video about what we were shown at Massive Entertainment a couple of weeks ago, regarding the upcoming improvements to the game and in-game activities that we should expect to see in Year 2. By now everyone should be aware of the upcoming gear 2.0 changes they've been working on, so I'll just glance over the subject quickly. The devs have acknowledged that the gear isn't working quite as well as they'd like it to, with a lot of players struggling to understand, and even the more advanced requiring spreadsheets to keep track of what's good. On top of this, players aren't feeling rewarded when they actually do find an upgrade, which is a massive problem for any RPG. They've explained that the gear 2.0 changes will be far more intuitive, deeper and satisfying. All gear is going to be rebooted, and a bunch of new items will be added to the loot pool. Items will be far easier to understand, and the stats being far more streamlined. And speaking from experience, it's very easy to check on the fly whether you've just picked up a well-rolled item. They explained to us how they've attempted to add more excitement around the gear, to help make more of it actually useful. I'm sure all of you have those talents that you don't bother using, and are constantly deconstructing them when you see them. Well, hopefully there should be less of this. It's not to say that everything you pick up will be useful to the current build you're running, but that it could be more useful to other types of builds, or classes, of which a lot of this is now pointing towards with the increased focus on build diversity. I've been excited about this for a long time, I miss the limitless build options of the Division 1. You know, the ones we had around 1.7, before classified sets took over, but after the atrocious meta builds that plagued the early years. I actually think this is something that's been missing from the game since launch. However, messing up the builds that people have been working on over the previous months is not often received all that well, but this is a necessary evil in order to apply these changes. To allow players to learn this new system, the maximum agent level is being increased from level 30 to level 40. This will allow players a bit of time to understand new items before reaching the endgame loot. This one improvement should dramatically change the feel of Division 2 RNG and build diversity, bringing us back to how it felt in The Division 1. The developers themselves have said that they want to return to their roots. In year 2, we'll be receiving some more skills to play around with. I don't think I'm alone with this, but the skills in the Division 2 just really haven't been that… fun. But they also don't feel as useful from a support point of view. I imagine a lot of this will change when the skill power overhaul has been completed, but regardless, we're seeing the return of a skill that I personally have been missing for the last 12 months. The Sticky Bomb. We got to play around with this for a bit, and it feels damn good. In fact, there's another type of sticky bomb too, called Firebrand. We didn't get to see this one in action, but from the name alone I'm sure we can come up with some good ideas. The third skill is called Decoy. I did have a play with this one, but only because of the way it's unlocked, and from what I understand the rest are the same. In Warlords of New York, you're facing off with Aaron Keener's lieutenants. Each of them have a unique skill. After you defeat them, you unlock these skills. In the mission we were able to play, we came across Theo Parnell, who was using the decoy skill. Initially I wasn't all that excited for the decoy. I just wanted to play around with the sticky bomb some more, seeing how far I could fire inanimate objects across the map. But after a few encounters running solo, I can certainly see the appeal. With multiple heavies coming down on you, it can be tricky to get some of them to expose their weak points. But when using the decoy, there seems to be a lot of threat, which more often than not has them spinning around to fight the decoy. The last skill was called Shock Trap. This one looked like a type of Seeker Mine, so I'm not really sure what to expect here. Though it must be noted that there were possibly placeholder images, so I wouldn't read into them too much. The only other improvement or addition that was mentioned at this time was some changes to the Dark Zone. The idea behind the Dark Zone isn't going to be changed. It's supposed to be a lawless area of the game, where people can do whatever they want, within reason of course. They can farm solo, or they can team up with others that they come across to help take down the NPCs who control the area. Or, you could choose to go rogue and hunt down other players, stealing the loot for yourself. Nothing has changed here. Over time, this area of the game has become a full PvP zone, where people join to fight other players. Nothing wrong with this, this is how it was designed. But in an attempt to bring the Dark Zone back to more of a PvEVP area, the developers have planned a number of additions that will incentivize more in the way of friendly interaction. 
We didn't see any of these additions, and I'm hopeful, but certainly very skeptical. Personally, I miss the early days of the Dark Zone in the Division 1. You didn't know whether they were going to help you or shoot at you. You had to be on your toes. The NPCs were so tough that you really needed the help, but at any moment the other player could change their mind. But these days it's almost guaranteed that they'll shoot at you, so either shoot them first or get the hell out of there. Having a mix of interactions in there would be certainly a nice change. But for it to be worth it, you'd need some incentive to farm there in the first place. Currently there is very little you can get in the Dark Zone that you couldn't just get somewhere else. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I love the fact that The Division 2 has continued the story through each addition to the game. The Division 1 story was great, but nothing really happened after you ran it through the first time. However, in saying that, I certainly would have never hoped for them to do this in place of adding replayability to the game. Which, it kind of feels like they did. But, they've been listening, and for year 2 we'll have a few more activities thrown our way. Although we didn't get any hands-on experience with any of this, they briefly covered what we should be expecting to see. Firstly, we'll be seeing the return of legendary difficulty missions. I'm stoked about this, in the Division 1 these were the way in which I put a new build to the test. So it actually lines up quite nicely with the Gear 2.0 release. For anyone not familiar with legendary missions, these are the most challenging difficulty level to date, that can be applied to certain existing missions. Sort of like heroic, except much harder. These are intended for only the most well geared and capable groups, and for those after a true challenge, they can be run solo, but it certainly isn't easy. Something you'll have seen or heard of in other games, seasons are being introduced. In The Division 2, these will be new mini campaigns, offering extensions to the narrative that run every three months. Participating in a season will open up unique rewards such as skill mods, gear, and cosmetics. Global events are making a return. These are shorter events, usually running for a week, and contain modifiers that dramatically change the way that you play the game. This too will work quite well in conjunction with Gear 2.0, where having alternative builds depending on the modifiers is almost a requirement. I'm unsure of what rewards these will contain at this stage, but they have said that there will be something called leagues that will be added, where the more competitive players can work towards placings on the leadboards etc. But more details on this are still to come. Lastly, but not least, they are adding a battle pass system, where players are rewarded as they progress through a tier system, similar to what you see in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. No information has been given at this point on how to acquire XP towards each tier, the types of rewards, or the potential monetization options. So there you have it, with the last video talking about the direction the story is going in, and this one talking about the improvements in Endgame that we'll soon be seeing in Warlords of New York. The only thing that I probably haven't shown too much of is the gameplay, so for anyone interested in seeing more of that, I'll try and get something up over the next day or so. There was only so much we were able to try out, but uh, this should give you an idea. And what are my thoughts on everything I saw? I think it's heading in the right direction. As I've stated multiple times before, I thoroughly enjoy the narrative direction the game is taking, and think it's an improvement over its predecessor. This isn't to say that I think the Division 2 story is better, just that the Division 1 story stayed the same over 3 years. What we got on release was it. However, the Division 2 story is constantly unfolding. I know this may be a somewhat controversial opinion, as a lot of people seem to believe that the Division 1 story is far superior. However, I do think there is a little bit of nostalgia behind this, being that it was a new IP, and I wonder if it would be a different story had it all been laid out in front of us from day 1. But I guess we won't know since we haven't seen everything yet. I'm loving what I'm seeing in the Gear 2.0 changes and I can't wait to get into some proper build crafting. The addition of global events, seasons and even the battle pass will give a bunch more reasons to log in, and I think the diehard fans of the game will grind every single one of them. But I don't really think it's quite enough. I'd like to see some more replayable game modes added in that aren't locked behind dates. I'm certainly not jumping on the bandwagon of saying survival and underground must be added. I very much enjoyed them, especially survival, but we've had that, it's been done. I'm saying take what worked on both of these activities and make up some new ones for The Division 2. Before I go there was no mention of any changes or additions to PvP. Although I'm not a massive Division PvPer, I can think of a significant chunk of the community that are, 
that may be a little upset by this. However, what we need to remember is that everything we were shown a couple of weeks ago isn't everything we'll be getting in year two. They'll be keeping some things to themselves, stuff that they're still working on in the background, that they aren't quite ready to talk about yet. So long story short, I think it's a giant step in the right direction, but there was a little less content than I was hoping for. Regardless, March 3rd, I'll be getting all up in this. Anyway, thanks for watching, hopefully I didn't miss anything, but if you have any questions or need something clarified, just leave a comment. Or find me on Discord, uh, social media spill, check description, yeah. Cheers!